Okay, we're going to test our memory here on another classic uh, chess game. Uh, this one was Steinitz versus von Bartleben, and it's from the 1895 Hastings tournament. Very strong tournament. A lot of great players whose names you've probably heard of, uh, including my namesake, Blackburn. Uh, this game was King's Pawn game. And Steinitz was white, and they played the Gioco piano. And Steinitz continued with the classical variation C3. And as soon as uh, white puts his pawn on C3 and a lot of openings, you'll often see black respond with knight to F6, hitting the pawn on E4, because the knight can't move to C3 to guard it. And that's how this game went. Um, White continued to expand in the center, uh, black captures, and checks the white king. Now in this position, I think a main line is to play uh, bishop to d2 here to block the check, but Steinitz played the very sharp knight to c3. Let's go back and take a look at bishop to d2. Okay, play could continue a couple ways here. For example, bishop takes d2, knight takes d2 is a pretty safe way for white to play since his knights are covering his center pawns and he hasn't uh, lost anything. Um, another way black can play is to capture on e4 with a knight. And then if white plays bishop takes b4, then knight takes b4, white's got this cute little tactic, bishop takes f7 check, king takes, and queen to b3 forking the knight and king. So this is all well-known theory. Um, there's a lot of rich theory in the Gioco piano you can take a look at. Um, but as I said, uh, white blocked with the knight. Okay, and this allows black to capture a pawn here for free on e4. So white's gambiting a pawn. Black actually doesn't take it. He plays a very rare move here, plays d5. But let's see what would have happened if uh, black takes that pawn. Then generally white would castle to get his knight unpinned, and black can capture that knight either way with the knight or the bishop. Very common is with the bishop. Now, instead of recapturing, um, I think the strongest line for white is to push the pawn to d5, so he's attacking two minor pieces at the moment. And black usually follows up with the move bishop f6, and still, rather than capturing, white proceeds with rook to e1, pinning this knight. Um, black gets this knight to safety, and white takes the knight on e4. And so white's gambited a pawn in this opening, but has really good development here, good pressure down the e-file. Um, if black allows it, he'd like to push this pawn to d6 to open up the diagonal here for the bishop, although black usually won't allow it. Um, black and white can get this bishop out easily, can put this queen here, put the rook on the e-file. So it's a pretty strong attack. Okay, but the game didn't go like this. Okay, rather than uh, black taking e4, he plays d5. And then white uh, trades a pair of pawns and can't take the knight. The knight is still pinned to the king here. Uh, so white makes an offensive move. He castles. Okay, that relieves the pin. So now white is attacking the knight twice. It's only guarded once. So black continues to guard it. Bishop e6. Uh, white plays bishop g5, attacking the queen, and black drops back with his bishop. And then a bunch of trades take place here. Um, I'm sure white um, Steinitz uh, thought through all these trades and found it the best line for himself. It's not actually very drawish. It was a good way to win. So Steinitz played bishop takes d5, and then bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, then bishop takes e7, knight takes e7. So a lot of trades, not much material left here on the board. And 
it doesn't look like white's doing so well at first glance. Um, material's perfectly even, and white has this weak, isolated deep on that black can pile up on. But the one thing white has going for him here is that he's castled and black hasn't. So what white's plan was to do in this position is to put pressure on black and keep him from castling. And the way to do that here is rook to e1. So we're threatening the knight. If black castles, he loses the knight. So after rook to e1, black has to have a plan here to get out of this pin. Uh, notice white is also perhaps threatening to play rook to e5, hitting the queen, gaining time, and then probably piling, piling up his heavy pieces here onto the e file. So black uh, takes into account both of those ideas, getting out of the pin and stopping rook to e5 by playing f6. So f6 guards the e5 square and gives himself an escape square for his king. And perhaps he can uh, castle by hand, as they say, uh, moving the king and rook separately. OK, after uh, uh, f6 was played here, uh, white continues to pressure down the e file with queen to e2, attacking the knight. Queen drops back to defend it. And then from here, uh, white plays rook from a to c1. Uh, not sure about this move. Perhaps it's uh, intending the following. If black plays king to f7 like he looks like he wants to play, then white might have this check on c4 and then went upon here on c7 so i'm not sure what this this move rook from a to c1 does but black says I, I don't like that rook facing my c7 pawn so he plays c6 okay now white makes an excellent move in this position he's got to get some more attackers quickly on e7 otherwise black is going to untangle himself and so he gets this knight into play. This knight's not really close to doing anything, though, because it's blocked by his own pawn. The black pawn's got those squares covered. Uh, so it can't really do anything from this position. Um, doesn't have much to do after knight to h4 either. So white makes an excellent clearance sacrifice. He plays pawn to d5. Okay, and black takes the pawn, not with his queen, of course. Can't uh, forget you've got this mate threat. So he takes the pawn with his pawn. And it's called a clearance sacrifice because white just cleared open this square on d4 uh, with tempo. And now he plays knight to d4. Why does he want to put his knight on d4? Well, because he wants to get it to f5 to pressure that knight on e7. So black has to do something about that threat, has to stop knight to f5. And he does it by playing king to f7, relieving the pin on his knight, so knight to f5 is no longer possible. You'll drop your knight. But white does have the strong knight to e6 in this position, which threatens rook to c7, doing a lot of damage here on the seventh rank where the queen and king are located. So black opposes the, the c rook with rook from h to c8, um, trying to get that rook out of the corner before the king might step back to the back rank. And after rook from h to c8, white plays an excellent threat, keeping up the pressure, still attacking black. He plays queen to g4. So queen to g4 is a mate threat. Um, queen takes g7 king would have to fall back to e8, and then the queen would mate here on f8. So black has to stop this queen takes g7 move, and he does it by playing g6. Okay. But white had another threat in the position, another tactic here. He plays knight to g5 check, unleashing this uh, attack on the black queen. So black can't lose his queen, so his only move is to move his king back to e8 to guard his queen. Now look at the position for a moment, and you'll see some white pieces are hanging here. You've got the queen hanging and the knight hanging. 
and the king seems to be safe for the moment, and black seems to have things under control. So white needs a very strong continuation at this moment of the game. And he finds one. He plays rook takes e7 check. Devastating check. Um, it's kind of a difficult move to find because there's a lot to analyze after rook takes e7 check. Uh, looks like there are four legal moves black can make. He's got two uh, moves with his king, or his king can take the rook, or the queen can take the rook. Let's look at each one. Uh, king to d8 is easy to dispense with. We've got a mate in one. Uh, king to f8 is uh, pretty easy to dispense with as well, I believe. Oh no, king to f8 is the move that was played in the game, actually. Um, but let's let's dispense with the other moves. Like, what about queen takes e7 here? Well, queen takes e7 loses to rook takes c8 check. Rook takes c8, queen takes c8, and white's going to be a piece up. You can even trade queens here. Force the trade of queens. So the queen can't take uh, the rook. So what about the king taking the rook? Well, after king takes e7, white can continue with, um, let's see, rook to e1 check, okay, and still threatening the queen here. So this king has to stay in contact with his queen. Um, he can move either back to d8 or up to d6. Let's look at each one. If he moves back to d8, then white has knight to e6 check, which also covers that escape square. And this drives the black king back to the e-file. And then white would win with uh, knight to c5 after that. For example, king to e8, knight to c5, releases this check on the black king, and white will win the queen. Okay, Even if it steps in front, white will win the queen. Okay, so king to d8 is not possible in this position, so what about king to d6? Well, in this position, white has queen to b4 check. Okay, and there's only, it looks like, three legal moves. You can move the king here, here, or you can block with the rook. Let's look at each one. If the king goes here, then, well, we've got a mate in one. Rook to c1 mates. Okay. Uh, what about the king going back here? Well, then we have knight to d6, or e6, rather, check, and the king is uh, forced back into the b8 square. You don't want to lose your queen. So king to b8, but then we swing the queen back here to f4 check, and black has to block with one of his pieces, doesn't want to block with the queen and lose his queen. So he blocks with the rook, but after that we've got Knight takes the rook, and you're going to lose the other rook in the corner because you can't take that knight or you'll get mated. The queen is pinned here. Okay, so that loses. All right, so in this position, the only other move to consider is rook to c5. After rook to c5, white can win with rook to e6 check, and looks like... Um, Either you can move back here and lose your rook, or you can take the rook with the queen and lose your queen. Notice the rook is still pinned. It doesn't have a back rank mate. Uh, best black can do here is take the knight and play the queen versus rook ending, which is uh, winning for white. Okay, so going way back, right here, after the move rook takes e7, we've eliminated every move except for the one played in the game which is king to f8. Okay, So that was forced. And now, what can white do to continue the attack? Notice there is a mate threat here on c1, so white cannot take the black queen. Well, white has the excellent move rook to f7 check. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, there are three legal moves. Either the king can step left or right, or the queen can capture the rook. If the king steps back to the e-file, we have a mate in one. If the uh, queen takes the rook, we have a tactic we saw earlier, 
um, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, and we're going to be up a piece again. You're forced to block, you can trade, and the knight will win the game. Okay, so that leaves the only move after rook to f7 check is king to g8. Well, then this amazing finish to the game continues in an almost uh, uh, endgame study-like fashion. Steinitz plays rook to g7 check. Okay, so he plays rook to e7 and then to f7 and then to g7. So again, black has these same three similar moves. You can move the king left or right, or you can capture the rook. You can't really capture the rook as we saw before because of this tactic here. We're going to, or that loose rook on the c8 square. So queen can't take the rook. Okay. What about moving the king back here? Okay. Well, after the, the king goes back there, um, looks like. Looks like we've got that check right there, and then you've got two unpleasant situations, two unpleasant choices. You can move here and get mated, or you can take the rook and lose your queen with check. Okay, and so and then we're going to lose another rook here as well. So un overwhelming uh, material advantage in that case. Uh, what about the king takes here? Well, then you're going to lose your queen with check again, and you're going to lose another rook. So that was another option. So the only one we haven't considered is rook going to the corner. And I bet you can guess the next move. I'll remind you what the last three were. Rook to e7, rook to f7, rook to g7. You guessed it. It's rook takes h7 check. Okay. And again, you don't want to take this because of the loose rook here on c8. And you're going to be up a piece. White's going to be up a piece. By the way, you can't take the queen, of course, because you've got this mate threat down on c1. Okay, so you can't um, take the rook with the queen, so you've got to move the king over. Well, white repeats with rook to g7. Check. But this is not going to end in a draw, because the difference is the pawn on the h-file is now missing. So we saw what happens with queen takes rook in this case. We've got this loose rook on c8, so that can't happen. And we saw what happened with king to f8 as well. This knight check decides. Okay, we also saw what happens with king takes rook. Um, you lose the queen to check. Okay, so you're forced back to the h-file again, but instead of repeating with the rook, you're going to check with the queen. And this is going to end in a mate. Um, only legal move is to take the rook. You come up and check, bolstered by your knight. Uh, you've got to move to f8. You check here. The knight has that square covered, so you have to move over to e7. You check here. You've got two choices. Um, we'll see the king coming to d6 in a moment. Let's look at king to d8 first. Uh, then we have this check. Um, has to be blocked. The rook has c7 guard it, so queen to e8, but then we have knight uh, to f7 check, king has to come forward, and we have this mate. Okay, so what about uh, the king going down here? Well, then we have queen takes f6, f6 check, queen blocks, and we've got that mate. So the game is a mate in this position, and actually I think that, I think that this was the last move uh, white made, or maybe the move before, before black resigned. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that amazing game from the 1895 uh, Hastings 